Oh my gosh. Hey guys, welcome to Journey Church. I want to take a moment and once again just welcome all of our campuses, those that are joining us online. We want to welcome and just wish you a happy Father's Day. Uh, perhaps you're one of our first time guests uh, here at Journey or one of our uh, locations. What kind of church is this is what you're wondering. Uh, the church your mom and your dad warned you about. All right, we're that church. Uh, we like to have a good time and enjoy ourselves and laugh a little bit. We've been in this series talking about fighting for joy, and we thought, what better way to talk about joy than to bring in Cleveland own and a heavyweight champion, MMA champion, Stipe. Come on, somebody. So uh, I know you saw that, that, that video. You scared? So we did it one earlier. And then you really notice at this time, I, I can't train with glasses, so I, I give you credit for that. Yeah. I can't do that. Good job. Yeah, yeah. It's that, a lot you got to show me how to train like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, if I don't, I can't hit the, the bag. Neither can I. But I, I, I'm, I just throw and hope something lands. I just, wow. yeah. I, I, so what do you do when you're fighting? Do you wear contacts? What do you no, do? I just, I hope I just, you know. Hit I've been pretty lucky. Middle? I haven't been running into my fists. You know? That's good. Yeah, okay. I've been, been lucky. Go for the guy in the middle. That's yeah, awesome. They do, Mary. Exactly. <laughs> Well, maybe uh, you're wondering, uh, who, who is Stipe? Uh, let me just kind of give you a little bit of a rundown. Uh, again, I, you heard me share that uh, Stipe is the Cleveland native, but also uh, he is an American professional of mixed martial arts, or MMA for short. He also is a firefighter and paramedic right here in Cleveland, Ohio. Come on. He's a two-time heavyweight MMA champion, and critics say, as well as I say, my boys say, and all of Journey Church says this as well, that he is the greatest MMA champion of all time. Put your hands together. I wanted to say thank you so much for being with us today, and, uh, you know, I know that you're also supposed to work today as a fireman. Yeah, I, that was my fault. I didn't realize I signed up for that shift, and then... My wife was not too happy about that. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, my wife handles the calendar for myself, and uh, I mess it up all the time, so I get it. So happy Father's Day on that one. Yeah, yeah you as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, let's start off with the most important question. You know, today's Father's Day, and, um, you know, obviously we are blessed as dads because of our children. Um, talk to me about you and your family. Give us the lowdown. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a beautiful wife. I mean, we met, actually, we just celebrated our five-year anniversary on. on Friday. Yeah. Surprised you hasn't thrown me out or anything like that. You know, I you know, cause havoc in the house, and, but that's what she loves. Uh, we have a, a daughter who's about to turn three years old in uh, July, and then we actually have one on the way that's due at end of August. So, yeah. But, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, 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 I think my, life, my wife is, she is, uh, she's pretty lucky, you know. I mean, she, she, every day she gets to wake up next to this, you know. It's, it's, I mean, how oh, can yes. you say no? I know. I mean, I, no, uh, if it wasn't for my wife, we, you know, we wouldn't have the beautiful house that we have. We wouldn't have the amazing child we have in future, a son. Um, she's just an amazing, like, person, and I'm very lucky to have her in my life because, like, she steers the ship. She keeps it afloat because if I was me, we'd be an iceberg or something going down, like we'd be, there'd be no, you know, so very lucky, I'm very lucky, and she, uh, she and she's very family oriented, that's why, it's another thing I love about her family is that we all come together on Sundays, we make sauce, you know, they're Italian, you know, in Croatian, or, you know, we bring our families together every Sunday, and we just, you know, use a pool if it's warm out, and it just, we love it, wouldn't change it for the world. But well, you mentioned, you know, one, you're, you know, Croatian and Italian, so, which side wins out when it comes to the children? Is the Italian more dominant because I'm Italian, or is it more Croatian? Well, I'm going to have to go with Croatian because my daughter looks nothing like my wife. It's all me. Okay. Blonde hair, blue eyed. Like, you know, okay. right. my wife thought that my daughter was going to get all the jeans, and my jeans blew right past hers. And, <laughs> my, you know, so my, well, my wife thinks that our son is going to have dark hair, dark eyes. So as long as they're healthy, that's all I care about. That's great. That's yeah. great. Wonderful. Well, you know, you have a. Um, a very strong sense of family. You know, I follow you on social media. I've watched a lot of your videos and interviews, and it comes through. I mean, very, very much in a lot of what you say and how you live and your, um, not just what you say, but um, just the, your behavior, right? And even what you do here in Cleveland, you can tell your roots are tied deeply to your family. Where did that come from? You know, um, when I was young, my parents unfortunately divorced early, but my father still was still in my life. You know, he picked me up every weekend, but, you know, I live with my mom and Mom and, you know, we lived above my grandparents for, you know, over a decade. 
um, and, and just, you know, we ate dinner every night. We, you know, we do, every, we, we do a lot of things with our family, and that's one thing I think my mom wanted to engrave in me. And, you know, you, you're always going to have your friends, but you're always going to have your family, no matter what. No matter what happens with your friends, you're going to have your family. So if you're young, all right, okay, uh, 29. Don't get any friends. Just stay with you your just, family. Yeah, there you go. You need to write that down. You need to write that down. And I, I know friends are so important to you in yeah. high school and college, but let me tell you, family is forever. And uh, write that down and keep investing in your family. And, and uh, I'm so glad that you said that. I agree with 100% that family is, is the most important thing. Now, you also, I believe, have one of the most, um, two of the most stressful jobs. You're in mixed martial arts. You're fighting, okay, some massive people, right? You're fighting for your title and all these things. And then you're a paramedic and a firefighter and so many other things that you have served in different roles. How in the world do you balance all that? Yeah, you know, I just like what I was saying earlier, I'm definitely not right in the head. I think <laughs> that helps in a good way, in a good way, in a good way, in a good way. Uh, you know, I think I just, I think I, I love competition with MMA. That's why you know, I, I love doing it. And you know, the fire for a paramedic thing, you know, I just, uh, I love what it's about. I love how it helps people no matter the situation, you know, um, I think my whole life, you know, I've been been helped, you know, coming up, and so I just wanted to give back almost. Yeah. But, but I love helping people. That's one thing I love doing. So how do you, you have all that, you're helping people as a firefighter, paramedic. How do you balance your family dynamic? You know, we have dads here and, and single moms, you know, they're they're doing double duty, some of the single moms that are holding jobs down. How, how do you keep a positive mental attitude and all that? You know, I thought about that question earlier when you said that. Yeah. I think you, you think keeping positive. If you stay positive, the people around you are going to be positive. I think it's like um, you rub off people. You rub, you rub onto people different. You know. So yeah. if you're positive and you're always good-minded, they're going to be feel. They're going to feel the same way. They're like, wow, that guy's energetic. Even though they don't know that guy got the worst day of his life, but he's just still positive. It's going to rub off on them and make their day better. So good. That's so good. You know, um, I'm in the. I say the second half of my life. You know, I'm in that first half. I'm not even a half time in the second half. You know, I can, I can see, wow, uh, I'm not in my 20s or 30s. You know, my bones are starting to hurt. Here, <laughs> you know? um, and I, I think about legacy. I think about my sons, you know, Josh and Joel, and what I want to leave inside them, what, what lessons and character traits. Do you have character traits that you want to leave in your kids, things that you want, like, hey, if I can hand this off to my daughter and son, this is what it would be? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, me and my wife always talk about this, but the one thing I do, one, one of the one things I want to leave with my children is that they're just going to be good people no matter what, no matter the situation, you know, you always be good because I feel, I believe in karma. I think you always want to be good to people. And then also don't expect to be given everything. Everything is earned. Wow. If you, you know what I mean? Like you, you gotta, you gotta earn it because it's, it feels so much more gratifying to earn it than just be given it. Yeah. You know, speaking of earning, um, you, you've earned two titles, uh, and many, many different wins. Talk to me about, and I didn't ask you this question the first time, um, what, what do you do for training? Like, what does that look like for you? you know, a lot of pizza. Is it like Rocky uh, Balboa? A lot of Modellos and stuff yeah. like that. No, uh, <laughs> no um, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I, it just depends. You know, uh, usually Mondays and Tuesdays and Thursdays are twice a day. Uh, Wednesday's a pool workout, Friday's a pool workout, and then Saturday's a little bit longer. It's more wrestling-based and I work with uh, strength and conditioning at the end. So, I mean, they, as you get, as I've gotten older, especially with my team, we, we all kind of just know what we're going to do and how it, we, I'm getting older, as you said, everything hurts. I mean, I was like tying my shoes in one day. And I'm like, oh, my back when I'm like, I just, even though I just got kicked in the face 20 minutes ago, uh, so everything hurts. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I just want to be careful, you know. So we, uh, you know, we listen to it. One thing I do is listen to my body and, you know, the training definitely picks up, but it's definitely more geared toward, like, what I'm fighting for and also my age and my body. Yeah. If that makes sense. That's incredible. The discipline's incredible. And I think to be victorious in, in what you're doing, but even in life, just discipline matters. And, you know, I have this phrase in my journal I wrote in there, my daily disciplines determine the depth of my freedom. And if, if I have those disciplines, I know I'm just, the freedom I have, I'm going to protect it as well. I mean, that's an amazing routine. I, I probably will never... Never do that. <laughs> but it sounds good yeah, for you. Yeah, no, yeah, me either. So. <laughs> I was bending over. It sounded good when I said it, but. Uh, yeah, yeah. I remember not too many months ago, I was bending over doing something yeah. and it, like popped a rib out of place. Yeah. Oh, well, actually, oh, funny, oh, so when I fought in Cleveland, a week after we went on my, fr my friend's boat, we, you know, we went out to the bar, um, 
to the uh, whisk Allen, right, hanging out and and you know, I, it was hard training camp, nothing good. So we're in the back of the boat, and his parents are driving. We're just kind of just circling Lake Erie, and he legit had like an eight-pound dog. I bent down to go pet the dog, and my back went out. My, my back went out. Even though the week prior, I got punched in the face, dropped, got out of a choke, and then finished him in the fight, I, I, my back went out. I'm an eight-pound dog. I'm telling you, little dogs... They're not from God. That's why my dogs are, that's why, that's why I have a 120 pound dog. That's I don't right. want to pick them up. I have a little dog because yeah. my wife made me get it. Never coming over. I'm never coming over. And every time I, <laughs> of course you with some Italian food. It's oh, right, hands right. down. We're it's good. legit. We're forget good. about it. You know, <laughs> I was walking the dog through the neighborhood and I lost my man card. A little, little dog. Well, if it was barking, I think you might be all right. I started crying like a little <laughs> girl. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> um, how did you get into fighting? Uh, I got done with, I wrestled my whole life, and then uh, I got done with college, and I was going to school, you know, paramedic, doing my EMT basic, going to paramedic fire, and uh, I was working at a gym, just training, to, you know, for food and gas money. And uh, the owner was friends with Dan the Bull Bobish, you know, a big monster guy, 6'2", 330, just a wrecking machine. And they're like, hey, you want to help mountain wrestle? I'm like, yeah, sure, you know, here we are. And then, you know, I started wrestling, and I loved everything about the sport, and then, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, here we are. I mean, honestly, I, I don't know what I explain, but it was just, you know, I just loved the process and everything, and it kept me out of trouble, always doing stuff, because I would rather train than go spend money, at, you know, at the bar or something like that with my friends. Look, like, hey, it's ladies' night. I'm like, yeah, they can have fun. I'm going to bed. Wow. You know, so. Wow. Yeah, I just, you know, it just it kept, it kept me safe and kept me out of trouble. And I, I saw a picture of the guy you're referencing. That's a big dude. Very big dude. How much did he weigh? A lot. I mean, like, I, his... My legs together is like his bicep. His legs look bigger than my whole body. It's incredible. It was amazing. Nice guy, though. You know, I never want to make him upset. Um, within UFC, you've had a lot of different fights. Was there a favorite moment that you've experienced being in the UFC, whether you were part of it or saw? Yeah, I mean, uh, of course, winning the belt in Brazil, you know, like I was saying, 45,000 people. 15 there were for me. 44,985 were not. So it was really awkward when I won, and it got really quiet. And I'm like, "Amy again, game, my heavyweight champ." And I'm like, "Wow, <laughs> do I really sound like that? I sound terrible." Uh, you know, and then also Cleveland. Cleveland was just absolutely amazing. Electric, like, you know, there was so much electricity. I don't really get emotional for fights, but walking out, I, I, I got goosebumps. I, every time I think about it, I get goosebumps. Actually, I didn't say the last time, but three days after the fight, I was watching on YouTube like clips of me, like, at, and I'm like, I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> my wife's like, oh, honey, I'm like, I got something in my eye, get away from me. It, it was just, yeah, it was, I got so emotional because it was just amazing. Wow. I think I cried for like four days. Wow. Yeah. You know, I, my sons and I, we watch UFC. It's like a, a family thing. You know, it uh, builds character in all of us. Uh, <laughs> because we're Italian. Yes. You know, the mafia side, yeah. I want to make sure I hand that off to them oh, in a good sense. It's about confidence. Sense. That's what yeah, you need. Yeah, it's like, confidence. Hey, yeah, 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 never go against the yeah. family. And... The one thing we commented about you is how consistent and calm, at least you appear to be on the camera. Um, how do you maintain that composure in the middle of a fight, you know, before the fight and after the fight? How are you so centered in that? I think it has to do with home. You know, my wife's constantly yelling at me and it just takes everything in me. It's <laughs> straight face. Yes, ma'am. Does your wife know my wife? I mean, it's crazy. No. You know, I'll vacuum the floor and she'll be like, there's a dog hair right here. I'm like, I, you know, and I'm, no, but I, no, I, you know, I don't know. I think it just, just, understanding and knowing um just i look at the end of the day like no matter what happens in life like win lose or draw i'm gonna go out there i'm gonna give it all i got i'm gonna sw go swinging but if i don't win i know that when i get home i have my my wife my kids my family my coaches and my teammate you know so it, it, knowing that i'm okay you know yeah. like, like i'm gonna go out there i'm gonna do what i can i love winning but i, I hate losing more than i love winning yeah and, uh, you know, after I lost in my last fight, my wife, I walked in the room. I'm like, hey, I don't know if you saw, you lost, you know. And she's like, yeah, no. I'm like, she's like, <laughs> she's like, well, guess what? You got a baby boy on the way and you have a beautiful daughter at home. Let's go have fun. So, wow. Thank you better than that. that. Amen. You know, thank God, you know, thank God we have wives that keep us grounded, you know, to remind us to keep the main thing the main thing. And your wife reminding you, hey, 
the belt's important, but the, the baby is perspective, yeah. you know. Uh, I mean, yeah. that belt is pretty shiny and pretty awesome, shiny. so it's, it's tough some days, you know. Yeah. Depending on how my daughter acts, I'm like, ooh, <laughs> eh, ooh, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's why my favorite thing, my color, favorite color is chrome. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> it's just shiny in the yeah, motorcycle. Oh, so nice, I, right? I love yeah. that. Okay. That's a whole nother sermon. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what's your prediction for the uh, ne- Nagagyu yeah. and Lewis fight? I don't care. They took what's mine. He took what's mine. I'm going to get back. Okay. Um. I really don't care. I mean, well, I'd rather have Francis win it because I get my rematch. But Lewis wins. I got some beef to pick with him too. But I want my, ba- I want my belt back. Well, I, sorry. All right. I won't ask that question next time. No, I like that. I like that. I want what's mine. I like that. I like I'm that selfish. Grit hustle. And I, I, I love that about Clevelanders. I love that about Journey Church, uh, the grit and the hustle, what you said, nothing's given, everything's earned. I love that. Um, let me ask you one more question. Um, what lessons has MMA taught you that cross over into your everyday life? Uh, you know, a lot. Uh, loyalty. I think loyalty's a big one for me. I think uh, that's all I've been my whole life. It just I'm all about loyalty and, you know, being creation, we're all about loyalty and and then you know, the whole MMA thing, I think, just having trust in each other, you know, and, and believing in each other. You go, you go a distance. Like I said, we have, a, you know, it's a village, you know, but in a village, you know, it's a Motley Crue village, you know, there's, yeah. you know, a pretty intense village. You got some interesting characters. It's yeah. almost like uh, I actually saw on uh, YouTube one time, someone said that my team looks like they belong in the Lord of the Rings. I love it. And I said, that was probably the best quote I've ever seen in my life. Like, I want, <laughs> it was amazing, you know, because... We have such, we have one guy's short, one guy's tall. We have one guy, he looks like he lifts meat and potatoes back there. Yeah. And, uh, but it's, so, uh, but yeah, I just, I'm all about the loyalty. I just love everything about, like, just our team effort and just, and just knowing that, you know, training it hard and there's going to be days going to be bad and good. You just keep grinding. So good. And, you know, the loyalty you're talking about, you know, you had introduced me to some of your friends and relationships. You've known them for, for years. Yeah. Like decades. And, you know, I've heard people like, man, I want relationships like that. And how do, how do, how do I get a 10- or 20-year relationship? 10, 20 years of investing, yeah. you know, but also through good times and bad times. Yeah. And I, I think that's awesome. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty really lucky. You know, one of my coaches, he's actually here with me today. You know, I'm very, very blessed. I, I knew him for a little bit. And, he, and then, you know, unfortunately, I was dating a girl and we didn't work out. So I, I left and I needed a place to stay. And he's like, hey, you can live with me. So he knew nothing really about me. I could have been a crazy party animal or anything, but I took me in and, you know, lived there for about a year, you know, it was the best decision ever made. And, uh, you know, I love the man, you know, even though he might not admit it, but, you know, he loves me too. Yeah. He scares me. He's too, yeah. Yeah, I see him back there. He scares me a little bit. He walked in first, y'all. I just want to tell you that. He walked in first. I got a little scared. Uh, (laughs) There you go. I hate ice. Okay. Because we're going to grapple a little bit later. No. Um, you know, hey, I, I just want to say thank you so much for being with us today. Yeah. And, um, you know, you know we, we have a few values here at Journey Church. And one of those things is that we say uh, that we want to be known for not how much we take, but how much we give. And we want to live beyond the four walls of our church. And I'm so thankful that, yeah, you're, you're um, a hero to so many people inside the ring. And you can see that. But it's very apparent you're a hero at home as a dad, as a husband. And I know that you're going to be that way to your children. And I want you to know we're cheering you on from Cleveland, Ohio. We're cheering you on from Journey Church. And there's a lot of people out here who've never watched mixed martial arts. Well, pay-per-view, you know, whatever it is, they're gonna, it's going to go through the roof. But we're all going to watch it together, right? Big family event, you know. We'll just call it spiritual warfare or something and make it, make it biblical, okay? Can you guys give it up for Stipe one more time? Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining us today, man. Thank you, and happy Father's Day also to all the dads out there. You have that oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. I don't want to tell you what to do because no, you no, can it's okay. It's okay. beat me up. <laughs> you know, Journey Church, um, it's been an honor to have Stipe with us on Father's Day, but I want to just take a moment and just talk to you for about 10 minutes if I could. You know, we've been in a series as a church uh, called Fighting for Joy, and it's kind of ironic that we decided, hey, we're talking about fighting for joy, let's bring Stipe in, Right. Uh, Because here's the reality, Um, everything in this world can be against you and rob you of joy, can it? You know, life happens. This could be a curveball. It could be a sucker punch when you don't expect it financially. It could be uh, a curveball on left field, whatever it might be, uh, relationally, uh, or maybe a doctor diagnosis and can rob you of joy. 
you know, one of the values that we have as a church is this, is we say we're not going to judge you for where you're at, but celebrate you where you're going. We believe no matter what season you're in of joy, no matter what season of you're in, in your life of fighting, that we're going to cheer you on and encourage you. And I, and I pray this message will do so today. You know, there's a phrase that I want to share with you right now. Maybe you want to write it down. It's this. It's easier for God to move a moving vehicle than a parked car. It's easier for God to move a moving vehicle than a parked car. My hope today that I can say something to you that might encourage you to get the car out of park as a dad, as a mom, as a family, as a student, to start moving in the right direction. You know, I want to encourage you to have courage to drive and move towards what God has for you. The word drive is this, and Stipe talked about this, the very pursuit of discovering and seizing the cause for which you are to fight for. Do you know that there is a cause that you're called to fight for. Some of you, I don't know what that might be. You might be pursuing your job or being debt-free or for your family, whatever it might be, but there's something inside you that you're extremely passionate about. On the other side of the coin, I want you to know this, that God, the creator of the universe, has a plan for you. God has a special purpose for your life. Even scripture tells us that he has plans to give you a hope and a future, not to harm you, but actually do great things in your life and through your life. And, and perhaps you went to a church and you were raised in church and perhaps they were just more doom and gloom and God was a lightning bolt God to strike you down when you made mistakes. Well, that's not the Bible. I, that's not the God in the Bible that I, I read. I read that God loves you and wants to do amazing things in you and through you because he has great plans for your life. You know, we're praying that you have, the, you have the courage to discover that in your own life. Not just your own personal dreams, but the dreams that God has for you. That you'll drive towards that. Have you ever, have you ever met someone that had crazy drive? I mean, Stipe has crazy drive. Like, he, he, talk, he wakes up early in the morning. You know, I think about Rocky Balboa kind of movie kind of stuff, you know? You know, eating like half a dozen eggs, raw eggs or something. I don't know. Uh, for fun. You know, and, you know, that's who he's driving, what, for the, to win the title. And he's going to, like he said, I don't care who wins that one fight. I just want my belt back. Why? He's got this drive inside of him that is pushing him forward. You know, there's a story in Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 14. Uh, Nehemiah was this guy who actually worked for the king, and uh, he heard that his hometown, Jerusalem, or, and Israel, were uh, the cities were in, were in ruins. The, the wall around the city was demolished. And back in the Old Testament, I'll give you a back story, is that whenever the wall was demolished, it was kind of like an embarrassment to, to them, and it spoke to all the other nations, and they would make fun of that city or that nation. And also represented their trust in God, the protection of their God. And all the other nations would mock Israel and say, look, at your God is, is not a winner. He, he's, he's abandoned you and you're losing because your wall is broken down and you have no way to protect yourself. What kind of God do you serve? And this went on for 400 years. Talk about failure. Nehemiah heard the story and said, man... I know we're down and out, but no way can we allow it to be this way. And he kind of was sounding like Popeye a little bit. He's like, I can't stand it anymore. You know what I'm saying? Some of you don't even know who Popeye is. It's not a chicken restaurant. Google it, all right? And Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 14, it says this, And after I looked things over, in other words, the, the wall was broken down. I looked things over, I stood up, and I said to the nobles and the officials and the rest of the people, don't be afraid of them. A afraid of who? Afraid of the people that are making fun of you. Afraid of the people that are, are posting on Facebook and social media saying that you are, you're a loser dad or you're a loser parent and you're never going to do it. Or don't be afraid of the thoughts that are going through your mind because you know what, you're like, I messed up here and I messed up this marriage and I messed up my finances. And I'm not, don't worry about what everyone's saying about you. It says, remember the Lord who's great and awesome. Remember that God always allows a restart. God always allows you to get back up on your feet and fight again. And remember that he's awesome. And fight for your families and your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your houses. I want to tell you, dads, that when it gets hard, remember, don't give up. Because you're not just fighting for yourself. You're fighting for your, your kids, your family, and your homes. There's more at stake than you realize we're praying that God gives you courage to fight again, that you'll have the, the, the spirit of joy put inside you again to, to rise up if you've been knocked down. You'll get the courage to stand back, back up and say, I'm going to try again because God is for me, not against me. You know, one thing for me today on Father's Day, I don't know what you're going to do. How, how many are grilling out? How many of you grilling out? Just raise your hand. No one. What kind of man are you? You know it is Father's Day is what we do, Right? 
Maybe if you're grilling out, put that in the chat section. Maybe they all stayed at home because they're seasoning their steaks or something. I don't know. But one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to watch some man movies. Right? I'm going to watch a man movie today because I like that. There's, there's two types of movies. There's chick flicks and then there's all the other kind of movies. Chick flicks are about 90 minutes of pure hell. And I have seen every Matthew McConaughey movie by myself. My wife would say, let's watch this. We're laying down, her head's on my shoulder. And uh, guess what happens? She what? Falls asleep. I've seen Matthew McConaughey. Uh, I've also seen every, um, uh, what's her name? Um, Jennifer Lopez movie uh, by myself. Um, For the love of God, how many times can she play the same part in different movies? But I like real movies, like Gladiator, Brothers, what we do on earth echoes in eternity. I love that. Can you feel the testosterone going through your veins right now, Journey? Say hello to my little friend. I mean, look at that. So good, so good. One of my favorite movies, right? Braveheart, he paints his face blue, and he says this, fight, and you may die, run, you little cowards. Isn't that Jesus right there? That should be like a scripture verse somewhere. Okay, run little cowards. No, 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 you don't want to be, that's Jim Wilkes' version. And you will live at least for a while and dying in your beds many years from now. Would you be willing to trade all the days from this day to that one, for that one chance, just one chance to come back here and tell your enemies that they can take your lives, but they'll never take your what? Oh, I mean, can you, it's like angels just sung. Now, if that doesn't get you excited, don't worry at all of our campuses, and we can mail this to you at home if you're watching online. If that doesn't get you excited, we have pink slippers in the lobby for you, okay, man? We'll paint your toenails pink, all right? You know, when I was in high school, uh, I got into the habit my junior and senior year of reading different kind of books, and one of the books I read was the book of Moby Dick. And it was an incredible book, really a story of a, a cosmic battle between good and evil, Perhaps you don't know the story. Herman Melville writes a story about Captain Ahab who lost his leg to this whale that stole it during one of his adventurous hunts. Filled with rage and vengeance. He's like, I got I to gotta, I gotta get this whale and I got to take vengeance against him and kill him and be victorious over him. And that was his fight for which he was living and dying for. And he recruited a bunch of men to go after this whale with him. And in the, in, in the book, he's, he paints this picture of all these men who are rowing and their muscles are Uh, fiercely taunt as they're rowing against the waves and the the waves are are crashing against the boat and they're they're chasing this this whale and Captain Ahab is on the boat yelling at the the uh, the oarsmen to keep moving faster and faster and he's racing to go after this whale to bring justice to his cause you see we all have a cause don't we some of us we concern what's happening in the world today We see what's happening, economic challenges, and that's your cause. You're concerned about it, and rightfully so. Racial injustice, that's your cause, and and rightfully so. We have to bring a remedy and an antidote to that. Greed, you see that happening in politics and and, and, in businesses. Human trafficking, the global epidemic of cat ownership. I mean, these horrible things that are happening. we got to eradicate this thing. I just, I'm just trying to be lighthearted a little bit. It's Father's Day. I get to say what I want without any repercussions because it's Dad's Day. Can I get a booyah? booyah. Thank you very much. Here's what I want to tell you, that when we are driven for the wrong things, we fight against the wrong things. When we're driven for the wrong things, Captain Ahab was driven for the wrong things, and he sacrificed everything, didn't he? And he fought against the wrong things. I see this happen all the time. People get sidetracked. They get sidetracked and think that money is their pursuit and they're running after money and it's the wrong thing. And they actually fight against the wrong thing. They fight against their family and they sacrifice their family on the altar of money, of title, prestige. Here's the truth. Without a divine cause from heaven you will fight against the wrong battle over and over again. But God has a purpose for you. Have you ever woken up in the morning and you said there has to be more than waking up, eating, going to work, coming back home, eating, going to sleep, hit repeat? There's got to be more than this. And I want to tell you with a resounding yes, there is more of a fight than that. There's an eternal fight for you. 
There is a purpose and a cause for you. I would say to you, what is your cause? Some of you, I'm going to name it for you. Some of you, your cause is this. Your cause is your marriage. I'm just going to name it for you. Right now, your marriage might be jacked up. And your marriage might not be what it needs to be, and you know it. Dad, some of the best things you can do on Father's Day is to go home to your wife and say to your sweetheart, honey, I've messed things up. I, I don't know what I'm doing sometimes. Let's go get some coaching. I know a great church. They won't judge us where we're at, but they're going to celebrate us where we're going. We need to get some help because we want our marriage to be 100% what it needs to be. Some of you, it's your children, men. Your children are straying away from the truth of God because of how you're living or what you're representing or what you're not representing. It's time to say, it's time to fight for the right things. You might be great in driving your business. You might be great in playing sports, but right now you're in the slow lane when it comes to the most important thing at home. I promise you, if you'll love your kids and you love your wife, they'll love you back. I promise you the way that children and your wife spells love is T-I-M-E. Spend some time with them. Spend some time with them. Some of you, your cause is financial freedom because sadly too many of us buy into the lie that material things will bring us happiness. Can I just tell you, this guy right here who's in the second half of his life, right? I can tell you this, that money, there is no bookend. It never, ever ends. You can never have enough. And when you think you have enough, you'll be fearful of losing it all. Some of you are living down the line of a recipient of generational curses. One thing passed down from the next alcoholism, alcoholism, and now you're carrying it. Abuse, abuse, and now it's upon you. It's time to fight and end that cycle, and that can end today. There's a scripture verse, Exodus chapter 4, in conclusion, it's this. It says, the Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Man, man. You know, when I read that, can I just be honest with you, Journey? I have a hard time with this verse. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. You know what that's hard for me? It's because I feel like I'm an alpha male. And whenever my wife's talking, I just want her to stop talking so I can fix it. How many ever listen so you can respond? No one? Just this guy? Thank you. Let's do therapy together. <laughs> you want to know why? Because it's hard for me to stay calm. It's hardwired inside me to fight. But here the scripture verse says to me, listen, there's a place that God says, listen, you, when you've done everything you can do, stop, I will fight for you. When you're working so hard, I want you to learn to center yourself and learn to lean on me. You know the story about Moby Dick? It's interesting. There's this, this scene where he's chasing again this whale to bring vengeance, and the oarsmen are going to town, but Herman Melville paints this picture that there's one person in the boat that does nothing. This one person is sitting in the boat, all idle and chill. He's sitting, and it says he's waiting for his moment, and this person sitting there is the harpooner. And here's what Herman Melville writes. To ensure the greatest efficiency in the dart, the harpooners, uh, I'm going to change the word, the dads of this world, must start to their feet out of idleness, not out of toil. The dads. Yeah, I know there are single moms in here and you're doing double duty. You can put your name in there. we got to stand to our feet, not out of striving, not out of anxiety, but idleness. Where does that come from? Knowing who you are and whose you are in Christ. It is the centering factor when you know that you are a child of God and there is nothing you can do that will make him love you less and there's nothing you can do to make him love you more. Psalms 46 verse 10 says this, be still and know that I am God. I have a hard time with this verse as well. I want to change the order and the sequence of the words. I want it to say, know that I am God, you'll be still. I want God to do something first. I'm like, oh yeah, I can trust him. I want him to win the battle first and say, see, he's pretty bad. It's pretty amazing. I'm going to chill right now. But he doesn't say that. He says, put your trust in me, and when you do, you'll see me flex. That's my version. <laughs> put your trust in me, and you're going to go ahead and see me win the battle. What does trust look like? You know why it's hard for us to trust God? 
Because we have men and individuals, we have seen so many people live untrustworthy. They promise things and they never deliver the goods. Our own fathers, our own parents said they would be there and perhaps they let you down. Maybe you had a great parent, maybe you didn't have a great parent. But let me tell you, either one pales in comparison to who your heavenly father is. You can trust him. With what, pastor? With your children, with your wife, with your finances. Most importantly, with your life. And finally, with your eternity. You can trust him with all of it. What does that mean? It means that I give God not only my problems, but I surrender my life to him. How do we do that? It is a decision we make. It's a decision God doesn't coerce anyone to become a follower of Jesus. He doesn't make anyone trust him. He says, you have a free will that I put inside you. You can actually choose to worship me, follow me, trust me, or not. Today I want to give you an opportunity to give your burdens, your baggage, the things you've been carrying to the Lord. First, I want to give you an opportunity to give your life to the Lord. It is the most important decision that I've ever made, that my children have ever made, that many of those that call Journey Home have ever made. Will you do me a favor and close your eyes and bow your head? You say, Pastor, I've never given my life to Jesus. Or perhaps you have and you've walked away from the Lord. And you said, this is my moment to rededicate my life or give my life to Christ. What does that mean? You're saying, God, I'm asked for, I ask for forgiveness of all my sin. Whether you're here at Avon or another camp or somewhere online, I ask for forgiveness of my, of my sin. And by faith, I receive forgiveness because of what you did upon the cross when you died for me. See, when you do that, the Bible says you become a son or a daughter of God. You become part of the, journey, the, the kingdom of God family. Say, Pastor, that's me. On the count of three, I'm gonna ask that you would raise your hand. No one's looking around. You say, I wanna give my life to Jesus. And you'll signify that by raising your hand at any of our campuses. If you're watching online, I just want you to put right there in that chat section, I wanna give my life to Christ. If that's you in the count of three, one, two, three, just raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Will you keep your hand up for a moment? I have some friends coming down the aisle. Some friends coming down the aisle. They're gonna hand you a card that says, I've decided. If you'll take a moment and fill that out, if you're watching online, our moderators are gonna post a link on there that I'd like you to click and fill that form out as well. It says, I have decided. It's a decision you're making right now. Keep your hand up until our ushers serve you that card. And will all of our Journey campuses pray this prayer out loud? Will you pray this prayer? Say this. Say, Lord, come on, Journey, pray with me. Say, Lord, I love you, and I give my life to you. I ask for forgiveness of all my sin. My life is yours, and I receive forgiveness. Thank you for dying on a cross for my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Journey, can we give a round of applause for all those that raised their hands? Come on, you can do better than that. They made the most important decision of their entire life. You know, I like to say it this way, that Jesus died for your sins so you don't have to. What a powerful prayer that you prayed. Now, what's the next step? The next step is, one, turn that card in when we receive our offering or fill out that form online. Number two, it's important that you uh, find a healthy church. I like this one. Number three, if you can do me one more favor, text the word SAVED, S-A-V-E-D, to 42,000. We want to send you a daily devotion that will help you, that journey put together, that will help you grow in your walk with the Lord. Hey, one more thing. I want to pray for you. I'm not going to even ask you to raise your hand, because here's what I know. If you're on this side of eternity, male or female, young and old, you're in a fight. We're in a fight. There's something going on. There's a real devil out there that doesn't want you to be victorious. There's people out there that want to make, keep you down. There's finances, emotional stuff. I want to pray that God will show himself strong in your midst. Can I do that? Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the Journey family. I want to thank you for the Journey Church, all of our guests, those that are watching us on, online. Lord, we have gathered together because we know that you are God and that you can do amazing things in us and through us and in our midst. Oh, Lord, we got battles. we got situations. we got burdens that we carry. We have things that no one knows about, secret things that no one knows about. We invite you into those situations, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to stay calm, and we're going to watch you show up and show out as God. You are the creator of the universe, and you care about us. You care about every person in this room, and you're madly and passionately in love with them. I pray that whatever they're fighting, whatever they're going through, 
They won't lose hope, but they'll gain strength in and through Christ Jesus. We pray it in your name. And all God's people said, amen and amen. You can put your hands together one last time. What a great service, and this week we're going to continue to pray for you and your family as you take some of those things that you heard today and begin to apply them in your life. As we leave today, we do want to just take a few minutes and um, receive our morning tithes and offerings as the ushers come. If you feel so compelled to give today, um, you can... Uh, Grab an envelope in the seat pocket in front of you, and you can also give online at journey.church. It's a very safe and secure way to give. Here at Journey, we don't believe that you give to a church. We believe that you give through a church. And so uh, our heart, as Pastor Jim even alluded to earlier, is always to be able to give back to those that God puts in our life, to give back to our community, and to be a blessing, to give outside the four walls of this church, to make sure that the people that we encounter in our everyday lives or or even as a church, know that the love of Jesus comes in very tangible ways. So as you give today, know that you're giving through this church to continue to reach out in tangible ways to love our community. Don't forget, you can also put your guest card in the offering bucket as it comes around to, uh, to be put into the drawing for the free gift um, that we have for you. Let's pray. God, thank you for the opportunity to be able to give today. We honor you. We bless you. We thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness in our lives. We pray that you would continue to give us our daily bread in order that your kingdom would advance and your name would be made known great in our lives and through our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, church. How good was today? Listen, as you go, know that next week we're going to continue our series, Fight for Joy, week four. It's going to be an amazing time. Pastor Jim's going to close out the series. And if you haven't yet filled out your chance, right, the info card that the moderator dropped below, make sure you fill that out for your chance to win not only an awesome Stipe shirt, some Stipe coffee, but a $250 gift card to Dick's. Listen, church, we love you, and we'll see you next week. Come on, church, how good was...